If you'll allow me, in this video, I'm gonna share with you an advanced pickleball strategy that's gonna help you make better decisions when you're out there on the court. As I put up here, it's an advanced pickleball strategy. If you're still working on your game or you're new to the game, save this video for later. You can watch it later down the road. There's a lot of other things to worry about before you get into this. But if you're ready to understand some advanced pickleball strategy that'll help you make better decisions in time and not regret them when they don't come out well, then stay tuned for this video. In this video, I'm gonna share with you the decision-making timeline. It's a process that'll help you make better decisions when you're out there playing and not regret the decisions when they don't work out in your favor. The way we experience time is linear, right? So we experience the past, the present, and the future in a line. That, that influences or impacts how we make decisions when we play pickleball or anything else in life, frankly, but here we're talking about pickleball. So when we play pickleball, we need to make decisions about certain shots we want to hit, certain movements on the court and things like that before we have all the information that's relevant to the decision that we're making. In other words, we're making our decision based on incomplete information. And that's just part of the game. That's just part of pickleball. And so understanding that there's incomplete information will help us help inform how we build our decision-making timeline so that we can make the best decisions for ourselves and for our team when we're out there playing. Rather than speaking about this in a theoretical fashion, we're going to actually use a specific situation, which is the decision that we make about poaching. We're going to make the decision that we're going to explore when to poach, right? When is the right time to poach and how do we make a decision to poach or not to poach based on the information we have available to us at a given moment in time? This, this analysis is in response to several comments that we got to a video that we posted about a poach play that I did at the 2023 Nationals. I'll put a link up here to the video if you want to check that out. I'll be using some of that footage in this video as well. But if you want to watch the whole the whole uh, footage from the other match, you can click up here. In that match, we articulated a or we showed a poach gone wrong, right? It was a poach that didn't work out. And a lot of the comments were based on a misunderstanding of the decision-making timeline. No criticism of the commenters or players and their understanding of the game. This is just part of the growth process. But they, from our perspective, they did not really understand the decision-making timeline and how it works. So that's why we're doing this video and we're gonna focus on the decision of when to poach based on proper decision-making. Over here on our court board, I'm gonna set up the, the poach situation that happened in the rally at Nationals. So we were the serve team in that situation. Our opponents, uh, Stephanie and Johan, were the return team. So what had happened was there had been a serve, then there had been a return of serve here to my partner, Karina, and Stephanie had made her way up to the non body line. So this is Stephanie, this is Johan, this is me, and this is my partner, Karina. So Karina's hitting the third shot. Karina hits her third shot over here to Stephanie. Now, I have been um, relatively inactive up until now. In other words, not a lot of shots that I can, not a lot of places I can get involved in the action because they've been freezing us out by hitting every ball over here. Uh, I kind of, if you want to check out that video, I'll put the link down below as well. You can check that out. You can see the strategy of, of Stephanie and Johan was to hit balls here again and again and again at the MVZ and then lob eventually uh, to try and win the and close the rally. So I made the decision to poach on this third shot. So the fourth shot will be hit by Stephanie and then I'm gonna poach. So I poached across like this. All right, Kadina had moved up, but I poached in front of her. I'm a left-handed player, so that was my forehand coming across. Stephanie was able to drop that ball into here. I then was already committed. I got to the ball. I flipped it up to Stephanie and I came off the court like this. And then Kadina was coming across me to, to behind me to cover. And then Stephanie was able to hit a winner like this. So that's what happened during that rally. That's the poach gone wrong, where I, I come across to hit a, a poach, ended up hitting it at my feet. What we have to determine, we have to explore is, was it a good decision or not a good decision at the time that I made it, right? Because here's the thing, the poach went wrong. The poach was awful. Like it basically, you know, I came across, I flick it up into Stephanie, Stephanie puts it away. It looks like an easy pop-up put away situation. But really the, the key is to look at the decision-making timeline to explore whether it was really a bad decision or not. 
And this process of using the decision-making timeline of understanding how that works will help you make better decisions when you play. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up the timeline specifically to the poach. So the we're, we're deciding when, whether we're going to poach, right? And we need to make a decision. To poach requires us to move, right, from one place on the court to another place on the court. So we need to make that decision at a certain point in time. We're going to call the, the decision time. So this is the, the time to make the decision. We're going to call that T, okay? So T will be the time that the decision is made to poach or not to poach. Now, the information about the type of shot that was coming back our way, the specific shot, in this case, a shot at my feet that was gonna be difficult if not impossible for me to do something uh, offensive with, comes at when? T, call it plus two. Maybe T plus one or T plus three, but the point is that it's at T plus some amount of time, you get additional information, right? And in this case, the additional information is the specific shot. Now, here's the thing, right? And this is your timeline here. Here's the thing. You're in a conundrum here because you need to make the decision here. If you don't make the decision here, you can't poach. So you got to make the decision here, but you don't have this information until T plus two. But you can't make the decision in T plus two. It's too late to poach. So the decision timeline sets out for us that the decision has to occur before we have the information that we would like to have, the exact shot that's coming our way. So we have to make the decision here. So the, the question you want to ask yourself now is, is you want to fill it in for yourself and the decision you're making, right? But what criteria are you using to make the decision, in this case to poach, but in your case for whatever decision you're making, that you're making at the time T? In, in, in our case, in the poach case, the decision was we had been, uh, they had been freezing us out, right? Meaning they had been playing, uh, we were playing on our heels. They were, they were controlling the tempo of the rallies once we got up to the Nambali zone. So they're freezing, freezing, um, actually more specifically freezing me out. So basically they were creating a two on one situation. Okay. And then the, the next question is when can I insert myself? There's really only two spots. There's the third and the fifth on the serve side, right? Because once we got out to the Navajo line, they were just hitting that that spot. They were hitting this spot again and again and again, and I'm this player, so I can't get over there at that point. So I can only come in on the third and the fifth. And so then the, the question then is, okay, if I've decided to poach, right? You know, is, is, is the poaching then going to change things up, right? Is it going to give them a different look Right, different look and put pressure on them and put pressure on my on our opponents, right? So all of these decisions, all of these reasons, all of these these bases for making the decision are the reason why at time T, and this is the important part of the timeline, at time T, I made the decision in this situation to poach. I did not know that the shot that Stephanie was going to hit back was going to handcuff me on the, my attempt at poach until T plus two. By then it was too late because the decision to poach had already been made and in fact could only have been made before I had this additional information. Let's overlay this decision timeline onto the rally and see what it looks like. If you like the way we're dissecting pickleball on this video, you're definitely going to want to make our upcoming workshop, which is how to win more games. It's coming up here in March of 2024. So if you're watching this video anytime in March of 2024, make sure you head to betterpickleball.com. I'll put a link up here and down in the show notes. Register, and I'll see you at the workshop. As a pickleball player, you're going to face situations where you're going to have to make decisions based on incomplete information. The key is to understand that that's fine because you have to make the decision at time T in your situation, right? In this case, the poach decision, that's when you need to make the decision. You cannot wait for the information to make the decision a lot of times. You have to understand that the decision needs to be made before 
you have all the information. And knowing this, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we avoid the risk of hindsight. We want to avoid that 2020 hindsight. We want to really be careful, be careful with your 2020 hindsight. Because what happens is, is that we then start second guessing the decision. So we start, we start second guessing this decision because of this 2020 hindsight, seeing what happened later. That's just not how life works, right? We don't have a time machine. We can't go back. We make decisions at T. At T plus two, we have additional information. At T plus, say at T plus four, we have the outcome, right? They'll complete your timeline for you. So you got T to T plus two to T plus four, you have the outcome. Problem is we have the outcome, then we look back at T and go, oh, I made a mistake. Did you really? As long as it, the decision that you made was sound at the time, based on the information you had at the time, it's perfectly fine. You can apply the same analysis to outballs, you know, letting outballs go. Sometimes you're going to roll out of a ball that you thought was going out, it's going to land in. If you apply 2020 hindsight, right? If you, if you wait till T, a T plus four is too late, right? To let go, not let go. You have to let go of T. So there's all sorts of situations in the pickleball where having this understanding of a decision timeline and understanding that your decision is going to occur here based on incomplete information. You probably will receive additional information in the future. I mean, in the case of the poach, it was that the shot was not very poachable. And then at T plus four, you're going to have an outcome. Be careful about using that to then second guess your decision making. Second guess your decision making based only on what was available to you at the time T. And that's how understanding the decision making timeline will help you improve the decisions in your play. If you enjoy going deep in your pickleball and learning concepts like this that'll really help you with your game, make sure you join us at betterpickleball.com. We love sharing concepts like this with members of our community. And when you're ready, join us inside the pickleball system. Pickleball system is the best training course for pickleball available anywhere. I hope to see you in a future video.